I often wonder, I often wonder, if you're a stand-up comedian, right, and you're in that world, you're, you're in the JRE Extended Universe, I wonder if sometimes when Joe Rogan goes on these sort of like little rants that he goes on these podcasts, he says certain things, I wonder if you take those things personally and you think if he's talking to you, if he's just talking in general about everybody in the industry, or if it's just podcast talk. I wonder if this is a thing, because if this is this kind of sub subliminal, you know, way to kind of get a message out there, I'd be a little bit annoyed. I'm not going to lie. I'd be a little bit annoyed if this was a subliminal message that every time he needs to talk to you or give you a little telling, he kind of lets it leak on a big platform like his podcast it'd be a little bit annoying doesn't kind of pull you to one side and tell you hey fix up this fix up that it's always like a subliminal message it's always kind of something wrapped in some sort of teaching on a podcast or some sort of guest i don't know it seems a bit weird but anyway he sat down with this lady and basically was talking about you know how certain comedians conduct themselves in the scene and i thought like you know i think some people on reddit thought it maybe sounded like he was taking shots at brendan or it could be just other people in general now i wonder if you're a comedian would you take kindly to this or would this just be podcast podcast talk or does he have a point let's play the video bombs and easy to and i feel like a lot of those people it's like take that energy and go create something the problem with creating is creating leaves you vulnerable whereas destroying you're you're constantly on the offensive yeah. it's easy to do but it doesn't do anything other than get your attention and i don't so think foolish. it's that fulfilling oh it's at definitely the, not well the they all the become day. they all become damaged all those people that attack people constantly online they're all like psychologically damaged and a lot of them fall off after a while because they can't take it anymore do you think that the comics who are engaged in lots of drama is it just a way to distract from having to do any work well there's that and they're all mediocre one of the things you notice about the comics that are constantly engaging attacking people they're not very good right they're not successful they're not that good but do you think they they're, could they're, get good yeah sure anybody yeah. can get good it's a, it's a matter of remapping the way you think yeah and re you know changing your the way you view the world and changing how you express yourself and also being a little bit more self-aware and a little bit more aware of how other people view things and whether or not you can contribute in a positive way instead of a negative way now this is twofold this could be a comment he's making about haters overall this could be a comment he's making about comedians but let's imagine if it's a haters point of view if it's a haters point of view i don't really understand how somebody like a rogan who's been on the internet for a while i used to be on Joe rogan forums like he knows what online culture or online communities are like some people just like to just hate on stuff and laugh at stuff point and ridicule things without offering any suggestions con constructive criticism or anything of any regard they don't want to be comedians themselves they just want to rip onto you guys because to them watching comedians and their content whether they like it or not is sort of essentially like watching sports or watching wrestling it's the same thing it's just a hobby and a fun thing that they do so this kind of retort or this sort of pushback that they have oh these guys don't create that's why they say these things like yeah that's the whole point they like to laugh and and snicker at you guys because that's what they do you guys create the content and then they respond to it by making memes by joking around making clips and laughing and trolling and doing that stuff in the comments and the forums and the reddits and whatnot that's what they're about so i don't understand why that's an issue i know it's annoying but i don't understand why that is not just an accepted part of the game you have fans who are willing to buy alpha brain and you you know athletic greens and they'll you know they'll buy whatever whiskey you recommend to them they'll buy toho sandals they'll come to your show you've got those kind of fans who are clearly fans the ones that will get tattoos of rogan's face on their body that's cool but also i believe in life there's always a yin and a yang for as many people that are going to be out there who kind of really like what you do there's going to be a certain people who are out there that are not going to like what you do now i think the true test or the true showcase of what a real creator is about is being able to just create regardless of what people say which is very hard to do there's very hard people it's very hard for people out there creatives me myself included to just create out of just a pure love of just creating there's always a little bit of an expectancy there's always a little bit of a uh, reacting to something what someone's saying there's always maybe a justification it's never really it's it's, it's very rare that it's always just a, from a pure place but what it is from a pure place i feel like that's when it connects with more people so i find it strange with someone like a rogan where i feel like he's more in touch with this sort of stuff has this sort of stance but if it is a point of view from a comedian's point of view if it's a point of view, if he's talking about this from a comedian's point of view up and coming i also understand that maybe it is quite beneficial if you're a comedian to get out of that mindset of comparing. Because obviously, you know, as the saying goes, comparison is a fee for joy. And I just think in general, unfortunately, things in entertainment seem to happen. You know, it's like, what's that thing called? It's like the, um, it's like a, it's like a term. I forgot what it's called in psychology, but it's a particular term. It's a particular term in psychology. I forgot what it is, but essentially it says like, 
whoever's at the top just gets more opportunities. Like it, once you get in, your foot in the door, more opportunities just keep flooding after you. So sometimes comparing yourself to somebody who's like at the top of their game is pointless because the whole reason why they're at the top of their game is because they have something to offer and brands see that or, or, or whatever they're working with and want to give them opportunities. So it kind of looks like they're getting loads of things, but it's only because they're at the top. Now, once you get to the top, you also get these opportunities. But in order to get to the top, you need to just focus on your art and create and make new stuff. There's a small part of me, maybe 5%, that can also understand from a struggling comedian's point of view why a lot of them will maybe slip into the why not me, hating, this guy's not funny, his special's crap, my special's better, why is he getting those spots, why am I not passed? I can understand why a little bit. Only because, and again, this is a weird thing to say, it's kind of a weird, um, what you call it, uh, unintended consequence of the success of the JRE Extended Universe. Because those guys became so successful at podcasting, because they did it so early on, they caught the wave before it was even a wave, it was a paddling pool, they are able to ride it and use it to kind of, you know, boost their comedy career, boost their profile in general, and they became much bigger than they would I think, ever become if they just had a stand-up career for instance joe rogan's a good example of it even though he was famous outside of it i think the podcast did give him you know took him another level i think because of that it makes it a little bit you know the the where they are in their career is a little bit uh misleading it's not you know what i mean it's, it's like brendan schultz a good example brendan schultz probably more podcast famous than he is stand-up famous but because two of them work in tandem his kind of standing in comedy is a lot higher than what his actual skill level is so that kind of i feel like can breed a lot of contempt a lot of bitterness a lot of jealousy C case in point my whole theory around flipping bgl where I said part of me feels like BGL was a fan of Brendan, a fan of Joe Rogan and all that kind of comedy scene, wanted to get involved, then got involved and saw behind the scenes how actually dumb Brendan is, but then also saw the fact that he's able to kind of, you know, live this multi-million, multi-millionaire lifestyle. He's somewhat successful in his career, depending on what you value success is. But, you know, he gets booked to do shows. His podcast is, you know, even though it's dwindling numbers, it's still keeping ads. He still gets a decent amount of views. Um, he's got, you know, other things that he's doing outside of it in terms of other projects like Food Truck Diaries and whatnot. So he's got all these things that have come in his way, yet he's not very good at what he does. And obviously he kind of, you know, comes across like a bit of an idiot. I think that's what let made kind of BGL kind of snap a little bit as well. That kind of like, oh my God, I should be there. And, he, and then BGL, if you see some of his content online, he's been trying to make it in Hollywood for a very long time. And he's, you know, he's done several things that are maybe quite decent, but it hasn't really popped from maybe the way he kind of hoped. So I can understand if you're a stand-up comedian and you're doing the flipping door somewhere and Brendan pulls up in the flipping Ferrari, <laughs> yeah, and he legitimately isn't better than some of the open micers that you see, but he's pulling up and parking in a spot somewhere and, you know, he's maybe chucking you a couple of dollars and whatnot. I can understand why you'd be a little bit bitter and a little bit jealous and want to kind of get in the comments and start hating. It's not constructive, I don't think. And if you're an actual artist making things, I think you should keep that brain of that side of your brain kind of closed and just keep focusing on the work um, really and truly. But I can understand why you should be, why, why you could be, because those guys are so far ahead of like anybody else. Like for instance, I, I'd imagine it's just a theory. It's just a theory. I don't know anything, but I'd imagine the LA guys in terms of wealth, take away Joe Rogan. I think, you know, per capita or per whatever, they're probably way richer than the New York guys. I'd, I'd assume maybe because of how glitzy Hollywood is, maybe because they understand the business better. I don't really know, but for sure they make way more money. Now, can we say that the LA guys are far better comedians than the New York guys? Probably not. It's a different type of comedy. You know, it depends what you're into type of stuff. But could you say that they are, you know, monetarily better than those guys in terms of their skill level? Probably not. So I get where the kind of hate comes from in that regard. Um, but I just find it interesting um, how that exists. And if anything, anyway, it's just a, a circumstance also of the kind of comedy scene, isn't it? It feels like... If anything, maybe similar maybe to DJing a little bit, I probably think. Again, I don't speak to many professional DJs. So I don't really know what happens behind the scenes. But I would imagine professional DJ scenes pretty similar, where there's many people just hating. Especially like, you know, why does this guy get booked? Why did she get booked? I should be there. He should be. I mean, like all that kind of comparing. And I think stand-ups are probably at the top of that kind of bitchy, backstabby thing. And it's probably worse now because everyone tries to pretend like they're getting along because Rogan's a kind of get along guy. He invests everyone to his show. He's all about spreading, spreading the wealth. He's all about, um, 
Um, he's he's not he's never a scarcity mindset type of guy. He's always in abundance. There's always more out there for everybody. Everyone tries to kind of copy his mannerisms and speak the way he does. So they kind of copy that, but I don't think they believe it to their core. And I think a lot of them kind of hate behind their backs and talk about things. I'm sure Rogan does it also. So I think that kind of breathes that kind of ground of that kind of stuff. And it's just, it's an unfortunate nature of kind of just this industry that they work in that just people are supremely, supremely jealous of each other and are always comparing themselves to each other. But I feel like if you're a hater online and you just watch their content to kind of hate watch, I think that's fairly okay. I think it's one, you know, two sides of one coin in terms of, um, it's one side of a two sided coin, sorry, in terms of people that get tattoos of these comedians on their bodies and they wear their merch and they tag themselves and stuff, all that, all that malarkey and somebody that kind of just wants to shit on people constantly. I know it's annoying, but it is what it is. And if you're a stand up and you feel as if like, you know, the likes of Tom Segura and Bert Kreischer maybe are like not as good as you comedically, but they're so much richer than you. I can understand also why you can be a bit jealous and a bit bitter. Obviously, it's not constructive, but I can totally get why that would get on your nerves. Uh, but for whatever reason, those guys don't seem to understand that to be the case. They just assume, no, this is just the way it should be. You guys should just be happy that we're doing this. It's, just, it's a bizarre type of mindset, really, I think, in my regard. But again, hey, what do I know when it comes to this thing, innit? 